Year one of Ambleside Online is in the books. Forgive the pun. Hi, I'm Jenny with Kids Learning for Life, and I quite honestly cannot believe that we have already finished our first year of Ambleside Online. Today I wanna to talk about how year one went for us, and I wanted to share some highlights and some struggles that we had with this year of Ambleside Online. Really quick, if you didn't already know, Ambleside Online is a free Charlotte Mason curriculum available in its entirety online at amblesideonline.org. Ever since the beginning of homeschooling, um, now my oldest daughter is eight for about, so for like two or three years, we have been loosely using different components of Ambleside Online, but it wasn't until pretty recently, like the past six months, that I have ditched other curriculum and decided to focus solely on Ambleside Online. My two school-aged daughters are ages six and a half and eight, and we have them working in the same year together. This just happens to work really well for us since they're really close in age and it just matches with their ability levels as well. So it works out well for us. First, I wanted to give an overview as to kind of how year one of Ambleside Online works so that if you are looking into using this curriculum for year one, you can kind of get a general overview as to what to expect. So the first thing that I noticed about year one that differs from future years is that it seems like a really gentle way to introduce the Charlotte Mason method and Ambleside Online in your family. Year one focuses mostly on stories rather than longer books. So I see this in Bible study because you're supposed to do Bible stories. I see this in like Aesop's fables. And when it comes to history, it does introduce famous history stories via 50 famous stories retold and also Viking tales. I also noticed that in year one, there are a lot of animal stories and these are told in a really fun way. And I think that these are kind of a gentle approach to starting off teaching things like science and nature study. As with every Ambleside online year, there are free reads uh, built into the schedule. And so some of these that we enjoyed were Little House on the Prairie and Pocahontas by the Dallaires. Now I'm gonna go on to mention our highlights for year one. And I'm gonna highlight some of the books that my family and I really enjoyed and I think are just must reads for any family. The first one I wanted to talk to you about is Paddle to the Sea. This helps with geography lessons and this book specifically highlights the Great Lakes region of the United States, which quite frankly is not an area of the country I know much about. This book has amazing illustrations. I'll just show you a few. I mean, the, the pictures take up the entire pages and on the pages, the author also went to great lengths to kind of show where on the map these different events were taking place. So that's a really cool component of this book. I also want to mention that I had, I bought a map that accompanies this book as well as some future Ambleside Online books that cover geography by the same author. And those were purchased via Beautiful Feet Books. So I will make sure to link to the version that I bought below and you can check that out because I think it's a great resource to add on to these wonderful geography books. Okay, the next one I wanna talk about is one that I have been raving about all year. And this is Our Island Story, a history of England for boys and girls. This history book has completely changed my perspective on how history should be taught to kids. I always thought that history books needed to be like textbooks or you needed to accompany readings with activities or worksheets. But honestly, this book is so comprehensive and so well told that we enjoy it completely on its own and my children really retain so much of the information from this. I feel like every chapter of this book is the perfect length for a history lesson for kids, especially in the younger elementary grades. And it's just so well written for that age group. I just, it's such a good read. I mean, aside from homeschool, I mean, I would probably be reading this myself. So we're really excited to continue reading this on into year two of Ambleside Online. Okay, next I wanna talk about my surprise favorite from year one, and that was Parables from Nature. Like I said, this was the big surprise of the year for me. I was dreading reading it. We started it kind of late, and I had just seen so many people on the forum and the Ambleside Online Facebook group kind of complain about this book, just like, my kids and I aren't really enjoying this. So. I was super dreading it, but honestly, this was probably our favorite book from year one. The way it's written is so delightful. The chapters are a bit long, so it's really easy, especially the way that the schedule is laid out, to break them up into chunks. You don't have to sit down and read a whole chapter at a time, which may be an issue that some people have with this. Also, it's really fun to read this book 
with different character voices. Um, that keeps it fun, keeps it exciting for the kids. And my kids really loved all the accents I did. I pulled out even like a Southern accent at some point. I don't know where that came from, but it's just such a delightful read with so many delightful characters and wonderful morals. And we loved it. We loved every minute of reading all the year one chapters in this book. I also do wanna mention with this book that based on the way that the schedule is written, you're kind of jumping around throughout the book. So you're not reading it in a linear way from chapter one, two, three, it jumps around. So you wanna pay attention to the schedule because sometimes I don't always do that as well as I should. So I'm glad I paid attention because um, the chapters that we read were great and the kids loved them. And we are looking forward to continuing this book on into year two. Okay, now it's time to talk about the struggles we had with year one. And I don't really wanna say struggles because I don't think that there's anything really that difficult about using this curriculum personally, but these are just things that we maybe didn't get to as much as I had hoped, or we just were not enjoying quite as much as our favorite books that I just mentioned. So first there's poetry. The first term of Ambleside Online year one lists reading a poem a day from A Child's Garden of Verses. And honestly, we loved A Child's Garden of Verses so much that we never really moved on to uh, the later terms in year one. So we kind of just got stuck on that, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. We kind of just went where their spirit took us. Also, we struggled a little bit with Aesop's fables. And by we, I more mean I. My kids and I really enjoyed reading them together, but I found it hard to get into a good rhythm of reading them because by the time we sat down and got ready to read, I would read like one fable based on the schedule and then I would feel like I needed to read more because I had already taken the work to get everyone sitting down for a reading. So I kind of binge read those. I didn't know if I should or not. So it was just something I struggled with getting into a rhythm because those stories are just so short. I mean, some of them are only like a paragraph or too long. We didn't really stick to the prescribed schedule of Aesop's Fables for year one. So I plan on continuing it on into year two at our own leisure and our own pace. And the last thing we struggled with was foreign language. Maybe I just don't pay enough attention to the schedule, but it wasn't until semi-recently that I noticed that foreign language is on the list of the daily tasks along with, you know, math and copy work. There's also foreign language there. So that made me sweat a little because I'm like, we haven't been doing that. So that's just something that I plan on incorporating more into year two. I do have a Spanish curriculum called Song School Spanish, which I actually really like. And the girls have really been enjoying it since we're a pretty musical household anyway. It really helps to learn via song. So I do plan on continuing that into year two and kind of doing it a little more consistently, if not exactly every day. Now I wanna share some of my takeaways from, you know, now that we've completed year one and some advice for new users of Ambleside Online. If you're following along with the schedule and you just feel kind of overwhelmed by the amount of different things that you are reading, don't stress. The Charlotte Mason method is really based on this idea of the science of relations, which basically means that children are needing to be allowed to make connections between various topics and subjects on their own. To learn more about the science of relations, because I am not the expert on this topic, I highly recommend a book called In Vital Harmony by Karen Glass. I will link to it below. My next piece of advice for you is to use audiobooks. Do not be afraid to lean on audiobooks, especially if you're a busy person like most of us are. We used audiobooks specifically like when we were in the car on a long drive, or like around the house as we're doing chores or doing handicrafts. The free apps that we used were um, mostly through our library. So things like Libby and Hoopla. There's also a free app called LibriVox, which a lot of the Ambleside Online books are available on there for free because they're in the free domain. So those are three apps that are great. So those are Libby and Hoopla through your local library and then LibriVox, which is free. I also highly recommend Audible. This is a paid subscription, so it is not free, but basically anything that you could ever want is on Audible. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below so that you can experience a free month of Audible because it really is great. The quality is unparalleled. And like I said, they have basically everything on there. So if you can't find anything on the free uh, apps, then I would highly recommend going to Audible. And my last piece of advice for you is that the schedule is not 
as scary as it looks. Yes, I know year one is lighter than the rest of the Ambleside Online years, but I know, I remember I was looking at the schedule and I was like, this looks pretty intimidating. And based on a lot of the things that I see other Ambleside Online parents say, I know other people feel the same way. So if it's starting to feel and look intimidating to you, just keep a few things in mind. First of all, it is a lot of readings, but most of them are broken up over a long period of time. So you're not sitting and reading five chapters a day, you're reading maybe a chapter, maybe even half of a chapter at a time. So it's not really that much reading on a day-to-day -day basis. Also, I find that since the readings are so fun, we just fly through them. I mean, reading these things are such a pleasure that we're not dreading getting to history, we're not dreading getting to science. It's all just so exciting and interesting that it just, we naturally want to read these books even on our own. My advice is just to dive in and you will find that the schedule is so much easier to manage than expected. If you wanna hear more about how I use Ambleside Online in my home, then you might be interested to see my How I Use Ambleside Online video. I will link to it right over here. See you next time and happy homeschooling.